So I stopped the last video about our enemies when I was talking about a random function and we ended right here having a random function right there. You can just delete it and if you don't want to deal with the random functions you can just import them from the source code the source code for this project. All I did was I created a new um, C++ file with a header. Um, I added these libraries and there are these three functions. They are just uh, random functions. One is a uh, random number from one to whatever you input uh, and it returns it and then one's from zero to whatever you input and then one's a boolean, true or false, being returned and here is the actual C++ uh, portion of it. So we are going back to our enemy and we are going to go to actually yeah um, we can hashtag include random dot h so that we can use the random function in here and in our um, update movement is where we're going to be doing our artificial intelligence sort of stuff so we have to actually have it right here so we avoid update movement and so instead of having this like up and down and left and right keys being pressed it's going to just be generated using uh, random so we're going to actually create a actually no we can just use direction that's right we already created direction so we're going to go direction equals generate random and this is going to generate a number from one to whatever we input so we'll have four generate random four so if direction equals one direction equals two Direction equals three. Direction equals four. And this is going to move the rect in the appropriate direction, just like we did on our player class. Except we're going to need to um, be doing different um, sprite things happening. So this is up and down and we're actually not going to be changing the texture rec because for our little green dude he doesn't have up and down sprites but you could easily do that if your person did um, so we don't need these directions because we already know that we're going there from the generate random so if we just compile this let's take a look at which direction so he was facing left here so at four he was facing left and at five he's also facing left because it's the next step in his animation so this is actually left and this is right so we should have 49 times 4 and 49 times 6 and how I determine that was that it goes each of these is 49 in width so we go from 0 0 1 2 3 4 so at 49 times 4 he's facing left and at 49 times 5 he's also facing left but it's the next in the animation and then at 49 times 6 he's facing right and the next one 49 times 7 he's facing right in the next animation so in enemy that's what we have and the y should actually be 0 and the dimensions that we're loading in are 49 
So counter walking should actually be between zero and one. And it should be, uh, let's see. We can make it starts there and then it goes plus 49 times counter walking. And then it starts here and then it goes plus 49 times counter walking. And I believe counter walking exists here. Yeah, that's right. But we need to make it so that uh, right now uh, we can just test it and it should be like sort of twitching around all over the place, the enemy. But we want it so that it moves in a direction for a certain amount of time. So we'll add that, but let's just make sure that this is actually working. But we need to actually call this method update movement. So we go to our main, and in our draw enemies, we can disable the rec because we don't need to see that. And we go enemy array counter dot update movement. So now we should be twitching all over the place. Woohoo! So we want him to not be twitching, but instead going do, do, maybe pause, do, do. Okay, so we go into our enemy, and we can actually make it so that uh, there is a state where he does not move. So we can actually create an ALSIF here, ALSIF, ALSIF. And then let's say if the direction was just else, then nothing would happen. Um, so no movement. Um, so we could create this to be ten. So then four out of tens of the four out of ten of the time he would be moving in a random direction. And then on the actual other sixty percent of the time he wouldn't want to move. Uh, so we're going to create another counter. We will just call it int counter. Go back into here. And then we'll just make it sort of as a sort of timer sort of thing. So we'll go counter plus plus if counter equals equal, no, is greater than or equal to let's say 500, then counter equals zero. And this is where we're going to generate our random new direction, right inside here. So, so once it, uh, this counter goes to 500, it's going to give us a new direction that we're going to be traveling in. And so it's gonna be traveling in the same direction every time it resets for a count of 500. So we're just going to delete that stuff because we don't need it for up and down. This, there's no sprite animation for that. So it actually should be uh, traveling a bit longer in a certain direction now. Woo! So he just kind of flew off the screen. Let's make it so that it is only for 100. <laughs> let's try and slow him down a little bit. So let's change his movement speed to one. And we can actually, we can say, um, movement length equals we'll this use that instead so we can change it from the header so we can change this to movement length d 
Do you see how he sort of he has a little animation because he's going doot doot and there's two frames? So that's kind of funny. Um how about we make it so that he has a greater chance of not moving and we make the movement length we make his speed 0 0.2 let's see how that see how that works and this is actually the fun part once you started get stuff working is like screwing around and playing with the numbers and stuff like that it's where you that's where you're actually really learning stuff is when you go in and you manipulate stuff like that so that one's not very exciting so what if if we made it movement speed 0 0.5 and the length 150 let's try that um, we can make this 15 Just terrible. See, that's a bit more reasonable. So we have one little enemy and he's sort of wandering around with artificial intelligence right now. If you can call it that, uh, it's easy to change the patterns if you just sort of mess with it though. Um, so what if we want to have a ton of enemies? Well, it's not very difficult. You can just push, push them back basically. So for instance, if we wanted to create a new enemy whenever we pressed a key just for fun we could do that by going let's say whenever we press Y we create a new enemy um, we then do this we're pushing back enemy one but let's say we want to spawn it at a random location um, we actually need to be using, we need to include the random header file, random.h, and we are going to go generate random, and we're going to do window.size.getSize.x. And then window or generate random get size dot y so now whenever we press y we should be spawning in a new enemy into our vector array and because of the way that we're cycling through the draw function it should be drawing all of them to the screen and they should all be moving independently because that's all included in their movement updates so let's try that out Okay, so I'm going to spawn a bunch of them. So they're all moving around, those little fellas. And uh, let's just create a ton of them. It's funny because I was, a few months ago, I was doing this, but I had a bunch of fish, and there was a, different, a bunch of different types of fish. And they were just, like, filling the screen, and I would try different artificial intelligence patterns that I was just like making up randomly and they would form like sophisticated patterns when I would spawn like thousands of them and stuff and you could just sort of wander around and like watch how they moved it was, it was pretty interesting it's also fun to um, create randomized stats for your enemies and then if you set up something so that if you click on the enemy like for instance I was using with fish 
I could see their generated stats and I would create special names for them that were generated and stuff too from a list. And they could be rare and stuff like that. And you could just click on different ones and see the different stuff you made. Because the constructor randomized uh, what, they, what they were. So in the next video, we're going to be um, dealing with collisions. So when we fire our missiles, we want to actually um, damage the enemy. So once, once it, uh, our projectile collides with an enemy, it's going to take away from the enemy's health, that we're going to give it health, and it's going to destroy the projectile as well. And then once the enemy runs out of health, um, the projectile, uh, the enemy is going to die. And perhaps our player could get some points or the enemy could drop an item. But, but that's going to be a few videos away, I think. We'll just try and get the projectile to actually collide with something. Thanks for watching and give it a thumbs up or a like, I guess, like they now say. Uh, if you learned something.